Hey everyone, Colin here with Plan C, and today I will be reviewing Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. I couldn't get my hands on a PS5, so all of this is going to be PS4 footage and gameplay. I promise you, I genuinely tried, but all of the bots beat me to it. So, I played this game from start to finish twice, I guess, if you include my New Game Plus speedrun. And if you want, you can watch every single minute of my gameplay in the streams playlist, which I'm hoping to include here. Before we get going, I just gotta remind you to like and subscribe. It helps us with that oh so important YouTube algorithm. And if I get enough subscribers, they tell me I'll be let out of the basement. Make sure you also check out previous pods, previous streams, previous videos if you haven't already. You know, like, share, subscribe, all that good jazz as I already said. All right, that's enough self-promotion. Let's get into it. Let me start by saying that this game is one of the best sequel games that has ever been made. I had tons of fun with this game, went on an emotional trip with this game. My only problem is that it is too short and two of the villains are lacking in depth. Okay, so let's first talk about the sequel part of this. The first Spider-Man game was far and away one of the best games ever made for the PS4. It built a world that was fun to web-sling through while on your way to beat up bad guys and save the day. Not only fun, but it was exhilarating. The web-slinging felt natural in a weird way. It was very easy to pick up and made for a fun activity on its own. They built characters that were personable and who you remembered. They created a smaller version of Manhattan that was incredibly fun to run around and find buildings that you know and used to see every day, as I live in New York City. Okay, so I know I'm not touching on every single little thing that was good about the old game, but that's because this is a video about the new game. And if I was doing a video about the old game, I would have to talk about how they use game time to have non-Spider-Man missions. And nobody wants to go there. So what makes Miles Morales a great sequel? Let me first start off by saying that Miles Morales, talk about the game here, takes the world that was built in the previous game and expands on it in some areas. The first that comes to mind is the combat. They took points from the first game and evolved them into even better things. Adding Venom powers, or the electricity powers, was incredible. Using them to keep combos alive or finish enemies, even better. Using a Venom jump to get a bunch of enemies in the air just to Venom smash them felt absolutely cathartic. And don't even start on the Mega Venom Blast. That was absolutely boring. Especially when you get the ability to do it right before you die at no cost to your venom bar. Oh my goodness. It feels great fighting waves of goons who just seem very enthusiastic to lose a fight to Spider-Man. They also brought back web slinging around the city which was incredible. It felt just as good in this game if not better somehow. Maybe that's just recency bias but I thought they did a great job with it yet again. Maybe they polished up mechanics here and there, who knows. Also, fun to see some of the animations where Miles doesn't quite have the smooth motion of the web slinging down yet. It's just nice to see small details like that, that really make the game go further. Just talking about small details, I want to get into the writing. And starting with Miles, Miles is well written with fun dialogue that make him believable as a teenager thrown into the job as Spider-Man with emotional lows and highs that make you care for him and love the person. While you have entertaining new villains that can provide emotional letdowns, incredible redemptions, and infuriating decisions, some of them fall flat and are one-dimensional such as Rhino and Simon Krieger. What I mean by this is Simon Krieger is just a rich guy who wants to cut corners and get rich. You know, what type of character is that? Also with Rhino, Rhino just wants to kill Spider-Man because he's Spider-Man? Come on, man. Even Hollow Pete had more character than those two. And in contrast, you have the Tinkerer. With the Tinkerer, we see a tragic backstory about how she lost her brother because of Simon Krieger's pride and his aloofness. And that points her in the direction where she wants to stop Krieger at all costs and thus, get through Spider-Man because Spider-Man is trying to stop her. 
She makes terrible decisions that cause her to nearly destroy all of Harlem. She doesn't listen to her best friend because he lied to her face and infiltrated her organization under false pretenses. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that she would be hard-headed. We also see her give great redemption in the end by saving the day and saving everyone in Harlem. She's a three-dimensional character, you know? We also have the Prowler. And the Prowler, in my opinion, that backstory is much more emotional. It's one that is surrounded in confusion for Miles, as the Prowler has clearly been an influential figure in his life. Aaron Davis, who is the Prowler, was brothers with Jefferson Davis, who is Miles' deceased father. We find out that the two brothers had fell out before Jefferson dies because of Prowler doing jobs getting in the way of Jefferson's job as a cop. As we go through the story and continue doing side missions for Prowler, we see Miles learning the past and the bond between the two getting closer as Aaron seeks to protect Miles. This comes to a boiling point when Aaron sells Miles out to Roxanne, which is Simon Krieger and Rhino, and gets Tinker and Miles captured. We know that Aaron Davis was trying to look out for Miles because he only wanted to protect Miles from Roxxon and didn't expect Rhino to go crazy and capture Spider-Man, but that's how it ended up. They make the writing so convincing that you totally believe that this is going on, and the writing really makes you feel for Miles, yet we know Prowler just wants what's best for his nephew. The stakes raise again when the Prowler stops Miles from progressing in the story, and you're then forced to fight your own uncle in order to save Harlem. That's really crazy. Can you imagine fighting your own uncle because you have to go and save the day and he is trying to protect you? That's crazy to me. The writing, of course, comes full circle when Prowler redeems himself and distracts enemies so that you can move on and keep saving the day. After, of course, he tries to beat you up so that you can do it. But you know, redemption. I found that these two main characters slash villains are fleshed out and lead to believable and relatable characters. So you must be wondering, you're only saying good things besides the Simon Krieger and Rhino part. My problem is, is that the game is too small slash too similar to the last game. It's just pretty disappointing when I'm having so much fun being just immersed in the game and then find out I'm in the late game, which only took about three and a half hours to get to in my second playthrough. So while I definitely loved the game, it left a good amount to be desired just because of how short the game was. I would have loved some more story missions where we get backstory on Rhino and backstory on Simon Krieger about why he's such an ass. You know, maybe he has really bad daddy issues. You know, maybe Rhino uh, was bullied by Spider-Man. I know that's not anything that's actually true, but just something like that. Another reason that I was left wanting more was due to the fact that the map essentially stays the same as the previous game. And while I'm all for running around New York again and finding the landmarks and finding buildings I know, it would be really fun to explore other parts of New York City, such as Brooklyn, you know, Queens, or even the Bronx. And I understand that you gotta keep Manhattan in it, but you know, maybe that's just a mid-game thing or an early game thing. I, I just feel Insomniac could have done a lot if they had focused on making another map. The growth of Miles throughout this game is so fun to experience. The stealth missions were also infinitely more fun with Miles' new invisibility ability, allowing for stealth missions to be done in a much different way than the previous game. Want to Venom Smash three guys and completely get away with it without being seen? You can do that. You want to just web take down somebody with their guard looking right at them and then boom! you're gone that's it okay y'all so to wrap up it was a great narrative you could see growth in multiple characters there was fun payoffs and appearances from people slash characters obviously some villains need to be fleshed out more and the game could have been longer personally i'm wishing for an expanded map or a different map than before but you know what at the end of the day 
they did the character justice. They did the character justice, and even more important, they made Spider-Man fun to play. So I'm gonna give this game an eight out of 10. Boom, mark it down. If you want to try out this game or you think you might like this game, I will tell you you should absolutely get it. I don't really think it matters between uh, PS5 and PS4 besides graphic stuff and maybe loading times. But beyond that, this game is really, really good. I'll, just a little short, but still really, really good. I highly, highly recommend it. So just before I sign off, I'm just going to remind you real quick, check out our previous podcast, check out our previous streams. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Every like, every sub, every view is important. So thank you, every single one of you who are watching. And I hope you enjoy your day. See you at the next one, guys.